Yellow, yellow, everybody, and welcome to call three of Awakening the Force Within, an Anxiety Freedom Special. On today's call, we are going to be working through worry and more. Worry is anxiety's mental counterpart. If you have heard call one and two and experienced the cone of silence and stillness under the tree of life, you know how fast this work is. You know how quickly we're going to be shifting from this vibration to the next higher vibration. And if you are totally new to this call and this work, buckle in, you're in for a happy surprise. The force is another way to understand universal consciousness or a cosmic force that keeps everything and everyone in place, a divine matrix that governs us and all around us. And within us, this force is an authentic power and awareness that is always trying to guide us and can be considered our personal superconsciousness. Tell me that this bit is clear or kind of clear by making the anxiety relief sound off. Hmm. So it, it's like the sound we make when we understand something like hmm, but shorter and crisper. Hmm. Try it. Hmm. And I'm going to assume that everybody's gotten it. And now let's try it five times. Hmm. 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 We always wait a couple of seconds in silence, moment we have finished any kind of process, to allow the awareness to pick up on what is happening in the body. Just see, how is this making you feel? Like Basuda says, deep breath as I completed five times. Lovely. Anyone else? And by the way, you could sometimes be making this sound on your own. You could also have children who are sometimes, for no reason, just making this sound. Hmm. And Yogita says, makes me feel it's being heard. Lovely. Self-validated. <laughs> so nice. Says Dr. Anna, yes to that. What else? Some release and release. Very nice. Namrata says, feel sleepy. Close your eyes, Namrata. Definitely, sorry, before you close your eyes, have a few sips of water, but close your eyes. Andesha says, release. Very nice. And not even five seconds. It would have taken about three and a half seconds. And already we are shifting. Anytime we feel relief, anytime we have an empowering response like self-validation, it's being heard. I am being heard. You are moving into the next level of your vibration. You are awakening the force within. Like Mandy says, big breath out. Oh, Namrata, take your time, please. You're driving. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Definitely do not close your eyes. That is possible. Please sip through some water. Now, here's the thing about these responses. These responses are what you need right now. These responses are what your anxiety needs right now. Like Elizabeth said, deeper breath. This is what you need. Releasing and, get, and feeling relief. Deeper breathing. Big breath out. Self-validation. I hear you. I feel heard. This is what you need. Sleepy. This is what you need. Maybe you are more tired than you realize. Maybe you're holding your breath more than you realize. Maybe you don't recognize how much you're invalidating yourself. We invalidate ourselves by constantly judging, questioning, doubting, gaslighting, and criticizing ourselves. We invalidate ourselves by abandoning how we feel, how we talk to ourselves. We invalidate ourselves when we have a sense of positivity, but then allow the worry and negativity and doubt of the mind to take over. And that's how we gaslight ourselves. The importance of all of this is not just that you know what you require right now. It is also to turbocharge your water. So you know what? Let us try this five more times again. And everybody else, even if you're not sharing on the chat, make a note of how it's making you feel because these are how we are going to make our own exclusive personalized healing water. So one more time, everybody. Hmm. 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 Have a sip of water. See what it's doing to the body. The seal also says deep breath. Nithika, we've made the anxiety relief sound, and that is the sound like a hmm, and we've done that five times. Everybody else, were you able to do the sound? Yawning, sleepy, meaning we need rest. We need to not overthink anything. We need to have trust and faith. We need to be able to close our eyes when our body is saying, I'm tired. For Nitika, there's slight pain in the shoulders. And Nitika, over the shoulders or from the top of your head till your chest, just use both your palms and please draw a sweetheart in the air in front of you. And Angie says, big exhale like ha. Very good. Mandy says, releasing some stuck energy. Fantastic. In all our group calls starting next week, except for the first one, which is on chakra training, we will be continuously increasing the hmm. 
Like today, we've done it 10 times. On our next call, we will do it 15 times, then 20, then 30, and so on. We will move up. And Rahul, <laughs> thank you, Dr. Adha. Thank you. Runda says, releasing from throat and feeling sleepy. And Runda, if you're not driving, please have some, please have water anyway. Close your eyes. Nitika says, feel so better and loved. The heart symbol makes me feel protected and cared for. Lovely. Lovely. Give me, apart from the ones you've already mentioned, like releasing, relieved, or sleepy, give me at least three more words that for you are the opposite of anxiety the opposite of abandonment, the opposite of aloneness. You can choose a maximum of five words. And by the way, if you have had sleepiness, then one of the words you're going to use is relaxation. Yawning is always about releasing stagnant energy. So whatever is the opposite of stagnant for you. Five words maximum. Nice. Protected, belonged, cared for. Cared for becomes two, so we will use the word cared. Loved, supported. Super. Love, oh, one more time. Love, cared for, protected. Calm, peace, relaxation, comfort in body. Deepa, in one response only. Relief, calm, joy, secure, supported. Calm, peace, relaxation, joy, self embracing. Calm, relaxed, understood, supported. Connected, protected, self, blessed, love. Circled, encircled with love, embalmed with love. Joy, lighter, safe, happy. Very nice, Deepa. And these are the words you are going to use on the mouth of your glass or the mouth of your bottle. If it's a bottle, please open the bottle. And just say these five words there. Once you've said these five words, you are going to put three exclamation marks around your glass or bottle. Awesome. Shoulder pain decreased. What is your name? And once you have put the exclamation mark around your glass or bottle, you will take your spoon and you will stir it a few times. Just stir the water. Try it. And see if there is any difference at all in taste texture, or temperature. Is the water smoother? Is the water cooler? Twinkle said, felt like holy water. Isn't that amazing? For Deepti, 
Pradeepti B, it's cooler. Colder, sweeter, silkier, almost spring water like, lighter than before, smoother. I love the smoothness, sweet and softer. Isn't this incredible? This is your own personalized healing water. Ask your family members to do it as well. But hang on, there's one more part to having your own turbocharged water. Everybody, please think of the body part that right now or sometime back or yesterday or usually is the part that feels the worst. Could be shoulders, could be head, could be eyes, could be stomach, could be uterus, could be thighs, could be knees, could be ankles, could be arms, could be palms. Just think of that body part. And when you're sipping the water, keep your attention on that body part. Drink normally. So don't gut, 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 gut. Drink as you normally drink water, but keep your attention on that body part and drink only as much as you can. Go ahead, everybody. Anvesha, is it necessary to have glass bottle or glass? Glass, ceramic, I don't know if there are ceramic bottles. Yes, there are. Metal, earthen are better conductors. If you're using a plastic, then the sides of the exclamation marks won't go through, but the five words at the top will. Twinkle, Twinkle says, what if there is no body pain? And Twinkle, you know that you have a tendency to overthink things. You do know there's a tendency to worry. So think of your head as you are sipping. And then give it just 10 seconds. And see what, see how that body part is feeling right now. Copper is fine, Andesha. Copper is a fantastic conductor. Please go ahead. And one more time, also check, how are you feeling overall? For those of y'all who are not feeling very thirsty, actually, you know what? We're going to do this next. What I, was, what I was about to say, first just check how you're feeling once you've drunk your water with your attention on that wounded body part. And Andesha said, my knee pain became 10 to 3, 4, less than half. We haven't even started with the decrees yet. Turbocharged water is unique to decree work because water flushes, releases, detoxifies, and sends messages to each and every cell fastest. The decrees need your super hydration so that you don't feel too tired, too sleepy, too heavy headed. The water will take care of all of that. Even Mandy's lower back pain has reduced from seven to two. Basadas, upper back is hurting a lot and here's the next thing we're about to do with our turbocharged water. We're going to hold the turbocharged water in our mouth and for just a few seconds hold the attention on the body part that is hurting, paining, feels awful, feels tight, feels pressurized, feels stressed. 
Go for it. Once you've held it in your mouth with your attention on the body part, you will spit out the water and then you check how you're feeling. Just by the way, upper back pain requires relaxation, resting, and to release the wounds of guilt, especially misplaced guilt. What is misplaced guilt? Can anybody tell me? Like Lucille also has lower back pain. Lucille, you try this as well. If you finish the drinking and holding attention there, hold the water in your mouth. Keep your attention on the body part that is aching and paining. And then spit out the water. Take your time. Come back and ask me. Uh, sorry. You can come back and ask me anything. <laughs> But come back and answer the question I have asked, which is, what is misplaced guilt? And gentle reminder that all pain carries dehydration. If you have pain or a tendency towards pain, you're not drinking enough water. Namrata says when it is created because of being wounded. In a sense, yes, it will go back to a wound. But what is misplaced guilt? You know, guilt is a, is a spiritual emotion. And guilt is a spiritual emotion because guilt is the only emotion that tells you right from wrong. We have guilt when we know we have done something wrong. We have guilt as the voice of our conscience. Hey, you got to make up, you got to atone, you got to apologize, you got to say sorry, you got to ask forgiveness. Guilt is the only emotion that has to do with dharma. And that is why everybody does not feel guilt. Only those of us who have an awakened conscience can feel guilt. The rest of us feel pressure. And Radha says, isn't guilt itself a misplaced emotion? No. It is a most, most incredible emotion. Guilt is the emotion that, that only an empath or people with empathy experience, which is why everybody does not experience guilt. Or if they do, it's extremely temporary. But those who experience empathy or have some some understanding of being an empath, guilt is always very high. If you will take a look at the 76 symptoms of anxiety, one of them is guilt is your first name and unworthiness is your second because nobody can feel worthy when there is guilt. Nobody. Because the sense is, I've done so much wrong or I'm so wrong about everything. And and Lucille says, lower back pain has lessened. Good. Misplaced guilt is when you have taken guilt and made it a way of life. It's all my fault. Only I am wrong all the time. Holding ourselves at blame, at 100% accountability, without holding the other accountable, holding ourselves at gunpoint all the time in our own sense of wrongness. That is misplaced guilt. Everything is not your fault. How can it be? Did you create everything in everyone's life? No, you didn't. You can't. And yet, right, something will happen in Antarctica and we will start feeling like it is our fault. Somebody else will have a headache and we will feel like, oh my God, I better do something about it quickly because someone, in some way, I caused it. 
you didn't. Misplaced guilt is to continuously stay in victim mode. I only did it. I have only done it to them. That is why they are like that. No, they are like that because they are like that. You have to hold other people accountable for their behaviors as well. Misplaced guilt is also that part of us that will take a look at somebody's bad behavior and say, oh, you know what? You poor thing, you poor darling, you poor baby, you have had such a bad life. It is okay if you treat me badly. It is not okay. Have compassion. Do not misplace it. And Rhonda says, when you take on or carry guilt that is not yours, also a good understanding. Your mother got things wrong, now you're guilty also. You have to take accountability for your own action and your own contribution. And you have to hold the other person accountable. In misplaced guilt, there is no understanding of that. There is no understanding of, oh, you did this to me. It is always, I'm such a bad person. I've only done it wrong. It's my fault. Somebody else is like this. It's not. It's our fault. We are like this. It's not our fault. But anybody else is however and whoever they are. Upper backs always carry misplaced guilt. If you, are, if you have a tendency towards upper back pain, please take a look at where you're excusing others while hanging yourself. Nanata says, when I spend money, I feel guilty. Another great example. What does it mean? It means that you've been shamed so much when you spend money that now your automatic default when you spend money is to go back to how you should behave around spending money. Because everything we know, we have learned. Everything, how we behave with ourselves, how we respond to our own actions, we've been taught this. Somebody has said it to you very often, Namrata, how much money you spend? Why are you spending so much? Is it really required? And immediately we've been shamed for our choices because guilt, blame, shame are siblings. They come together. Now we're guilty. Fear of having done it wrong. But have you done anything wrong? No. What you have done is incurred the fear of having done it wrong in someone else's eyes. Very, another great example. Thank you, Namrita. Have guilt. It's beautiful because guilt is telling you, hey, you've got to make amends here. Guilt is not about displeasing a person in authority. Guilt is about not being in dharma. You raised your voice on a child. Have guilt. You ignored somebody in need. Let's have some guilt. You didn't do what you could do to make someone feel a little better. And not necessarily in, give, in kowtowing to their commands. Get up at seven. Don't get up at seven. You didn't. You didn't. Uh, sit properly on the table, your awareness will draw a very, very good and strong line about where you must feel guilty. Otherwise, guilt is just the pressure of having displeased someone and the fear of consequences of that. That's not guilt.
How are we being victims by excusing others' behaviors? Because when you don't hold other people accountable for their behaviors, you will also not hold yourself accountable. Because you see, the opposite of accountability is blame. So if you're saying that everybody can behave how they want, who are you going to say shouldn't behave like that? Yourself. Now you are carrying 100% of the weight of two people. Every time we excuse other people's behaviors, bad behaviors that is, we are saying, please continue. Please keep doing this to me. You are most welcome to keep doing this to me. Please give me more of this bad behavior. I want more of this bad behavior because you have the right to this bad behavior. Only I don't have the right to bad behavior. Only I must be the martyr, the victim, the scapegoat, the sacrificial lamb. That doesn't work for anybody. That's just a glorified victimhood. We then land up in pain. By the way, upper back pain is not to be confused with shoulder pain. Shoulder pain is the pain of carrying too many expectations. Carrying too many burdens and responsibilities. Not being able to ask for help. Not being able to share the load with others in your village. Again, right? I, I, I. Only I must carry this load. Only I must do everything for everyone. Only I, the only I, right, becomes an ego. But more on that, probably today itself. Right now, everybody check one more time. How are you doing? And how is your tendency to worry? Because most of us are not comfortable with how we feel and are way more comfortable with how we think, our worry is also going to let us know how much anxiety there is. Our worry also lets us know how much we do not have trust and faith that we are not trusting that things will work out. We are not trusting that we have the wherewithal to make it work out. We are not trusting whoever is the other person involved, if there is another person involved in the situation. We do not have the faith that life is always course-correcting and will therefore course-correct this as well. Where we have a distinct sense of separation, even disconnection, from the force, and not force, the force, the universe, God. The more fear we have, the bigger the sense of separation and disconnection is. The more fear we have, the more we are anxiety prone. The more anxiety prone we have, the more we will live in our heads and be worried. One of the other things that happen with anxiety because that's anxiety's best friend, is insecurity. And insecurity's best friend is control. Now we're trying to control everything. We're trying to control when we sleep, what we think, when we wake up, what we will eat, what somebody else will eat. We're trying to control our bosses. We're trying to control our colleagues. We're trying to control our family members. And if we have children, we're definitely trying to control them. Control is a way of saying, I do not trust that life will work out. Therefore, I have to make sure that I do whatever I can to get my needs met. To have life the way I want to have life. I, I, I. <laughs> and when we have a lot of I, 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 we tend to get egotistical. Even if our lives are miserable and we know we are being victimized and we feel more victim than winner, that I, I, I becomes egotistical. Egotistical is the fixed rigidness of ego. Ego is not a problem. 
Everybody has an ego and an ego is required. An ego is an understanding of who we are. I'm a girl. I'm sitting on a chair. I'm on this call. All of these understandings of us, however basic and functional they are, are ego. I do this, I think this, I feel this. It's ego. I'm hungry. It's part of ego. And ego is only a definition. It's when you become, we become fixed on a definition that we become egotistical. And when we're egotistical, we are not going to turn to God. And if we do not know how to turn to a higher power, that sense of abandonment and loneliness will continue to increase in our lives. Jiska koi nahi, jiska khuda hota hai. Because all of us will experience aloneness, have experienced aloneness at some point or the other. But are you ever really alone? Nitika says, how do we cope when protecting ourselves unintentionally harming others? Is the guilt justified if hurting them was never our intent? Guilt is only a message, just as anger is only a message. You don't have to justify your guilt. You have to be aware of your guilt. If you ha unintentionally harm someone, please apologize. I did that unintentionally. I was only trying to express so and so. I didn't, I didn't mean for it to hurt you. I'm sorry that I hurt you. I'm sorry I made you feel bad. That was not my intention at all. There is no justification. You justify something that you're going to continue with. Why should you continue with guilt? It is to make amends. Why should you continue with anger? Why should you continue with anxiety? All of them are only messages. How alone we feel. How abandoned we are. How much we are waiting for a family member to change or show up for us. Why should it continue? In fact, our anxiety freedom is so that anxiety doesn't continue. So that our wound of abandonment is bandaged. It is swathed in cooling, healing, divine balm. So that we never ever feel alone or be afraid of being on our own. But in that moment when we are alone, and I'm talking about us as older people. I'm not talking about children learning to be alone. In that moment of aloneness, you are there. With your thoughts, with your feelings, you are there. With life around you, you are there with the force within. You are not alone. You feel alone because that person is not there. But you are not alone. And you will recognize that more and more. As the force within awakens, expands and increases, and your connection with the universe and universal consciousness also increases. So one more time. Take a look, how are you doing and how much do you worry? On a scale of zero to any number, any number, if million crosses your mind, million it is, please write that on your terrible page. Don't write it in the chat. Also, please make a note of any kind of hurt, pain, ache, distress, stress, tightness, tension in the body. Write it on the terrible sheet of paper. And then have some of your turbocharged water. From here onwards, every time I say water, it means only turbocharged water. And give me a Hmm, if you got that.
Awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Vasudha. Thank you. Poonam, thank you. Mithika. Thank you, Mugda. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Anvesha. Thank you, Yogita. Hmm. <laughs> It is my deep joy and pleasure to introduce you to the foundation decree, the decree that started the ball rolling on all other decrees, the decrees that showed up for the completion of karma in the fastest way possible. The Lord of Karma in time is Lord Saturn. And even though you may hear this on a replay, today is Saturday and today is his day. And which is why we're also going to be understanding a little bit of karma and we're definitely going to be using his first ever decree and this is of four words but they are just well the principle behind the decree is that all of us are taking quite some time to complete our negative karma and increase our positive karma with this decree we will complete faster and we will bring in lighter, brighter karma faster as well. The decree, and all decrees by the way, do not just clear in the moment or make us feel better in the moment. They also reveal something. They also guide us. They also take us to the next step in our life. And this is, again, a system that we call the feedback loop. A feedback loop in the decrees means whatever shows up next. And the example I give every time to explain this, because we all understand money better than anything else, is if you're doing money work and a bill shows up, it is not that you haven't done the decree correctly or that the decree is not working. The bill is part of your feedback that you are not giving enough but are expecting more to come in. Whatever happens after you give the decree within seconds, minutes and hours and definitely within 24 hours is part of your feedback loop. Because with the decrees, you will see changes take place in the same day. The very day you will see what is happening in your world. There's nothing faster than them. Saturn's decrees are four letters of you can leave now, I ask you to take a look at worry and whatever was your number, 10 times we are just going to say, you can leave now, 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 you can leave now. Have your water. Check. How are you feeling? What was the number when you wrote it down before you gave the decree? What is the number now? And that share on our chat. Also take a look at the body part that was expressing the pain of our feelings, emotions, situation, life. How is that part also feeling? And let all of us know. Like Paru says, decrease to five. Lovely. And here's the other thing about the decrees. If you will just give it another minute, the number will change again. Like, like and this also happens with anxiety, right? The motoring. Motoring, whether we are motor acting or motor mouthing or motor texting where you've just got like 20,000 things to say and do where you're multitasking where you're running from from one room to the other where you're picking up socks in one room where you're putting dishes 
in the dishwasher in the neck, where you're opening the door because there's a bell in the neck, where you are giving instructions to somebody else in the fourth room. Any time we are motoring, we are in the grips of deep anxiety. Let me quickly do it before time runs out. Let me quickly say it before I have to listen to something else. Let me quickly make this happen. This sense of urgency right, creates an, an unnecessary pressure in the body. And therefore, when you know the decrease, at any given time, you can just repeat the ones you know. You do not have to do many at a time. You can know many, and quite a few of you all are familiar with the decrease. You have more than at least 25 decrees. Some of you all are new. Wonderful. Give it a moment. See what your feedback loop is telling you. Like, I would think a minute or two has already gone by since we've done. You can leave now 10 times. Please take a look at the number again. Nishi is doing the zero dance. And the zero dance is also something, if not unique to the decree, is definitely unique to our work. And that dance is, you know, it's how Matt Chandler would do it in France when he would put both his arms out on one side and make a circle around it. And that's zero, zero. <laughs> Thank you for that reminder, Nishi. Let me wait to hear back from quite a few of you all. Parul's lighter. Basada's gone from 1,000 to 10. Upper back is so light. Nitika is also feeling refreshed, but there is too much itching and rashes. So itching is always itching to leave, itching to escape. But itching can sometimes be itching to thwack someone, itching to shake someone else. Itching comes from a lot of built-up frustration and impatience and rashes usually have to do with rash decisions. Am I making a rash decision or have I made too many rash decisions? Have I spoken too rashly? Have I heard too many rash things? Uh, start sipping your water. Asuda, and definitely make your sweetheart in the air around all of these parts. For, for Mandy as well, lower back has gone to zero, zero. For Lucille, it's down to two. Lucille, check again, what is the number now? And Andesha says, there's a picture of worriness about an incident, not able to get on it. You applied this on that, and it feels in, and you're seeing it washed away. Fantastic. And Mandy says, all are incredible, but Saturn's decrees are my favorite. And Saturn's decrees invariably shows up no matter what program we're doing. Some version or the other of Saturn's decrees is always used. There are about seven of them, including, including adaptations, and we always use them everywhere. The you can leave now is it's indispensable. Mukda is also relaxed, breathing more easily. Nirmala is also feeling okay. And Lucille says it's gone to zero. We didn't give another decree. The decrees work for your lifetime. But awareness moves away. 
So you can't see that from today till 100 years later how the decree is working, but the decrees work for life. How cool is this, right? How cool is this? I also want to mention over here that our journey from abandoned and alone, which is the wound that gives rise to anxiety and all and hundred other symptoms, that journey to not being abandoned and alone or to recognizing that we aren't abandoned and alone has various phases to it. First is the phase where we will feel less abandoned, less alone. Then we will feel less abandoned, but a little more alone. Then a little less alone, but abandoned. Until finally, the pendulum moves to the other end and we feel neither, or if we do, it is extremely momentarily. And learning kicks in, the knowledge kicks in, muscle memory kicks in that, hey, I'm with me. What am I running from with all of this mental chatter? <laughs> am I ever really alone with all of these feelings asking for my attention and expression? Am I ever really alone? And if you are breathing, is everybody breathing? Please check. No, no, please check. <laughs> if you are breathing, you have not been abandoned. Whether or not you believe in God because God does not require your belief. Whether or not you believe in angels because angels also don't require your belief. Something is keeping you going. The force within is alive. So knowing I'm never alone is that the opposite of abandonment. The opposite of abandonment is, I was never abandoned. No matter what you've gone through, if you've made it here, you were not abandoned. In whatever tiny form, friends, family, single family member, distant relative, books, school friends, a, a kindly school teacher, a helpful neighbor, you have not been abandoned. You made it here. Nobody has done anything alone and nobody will and nobody can. Your data must pick up on this. You are not abandoned. And when you develop this force within, which is your voice from the force outside of you. You cannot feel abandoned or alone. In that moment, whatever it is, Om Gan Ganpate Namaha, Om Namah Shivai, Shri Krishna Sharanam Mama, whether you have to go towards invoking a deity, what are you really saying? How can you, if you do not know Shri Krishna, are you going to say Shri Krishna Sharanam Mama? which means I seek refuge in Lord Krishna. Are you going to say it? So if you know there is someone there that you can talk to or call upon, are you ever abandoned or alone? When we say there is no one, what we're really saying is my family member is not there. What we're really saying is I don't know who to call in my family. My family has abandoned me. My family has left me alone. My family doesn't have my back. They don't care. They don't love me. Is what we're really saying. Is that the same as abandoned and alone? Physically, yes. Because the body knows every baby, every child, every young adult, every teenager, every older person knows we cannot make it without the presence of another. Even if that other is only your household help or your gardener. You cannot make it without your grocer. You cannot make it without the Uber driver. You cannot make it without whatever workshop you are going to. 
So when we take a look at the wound of abandonment and we recognize, hey, I have been abandoned by my family, but I am not abandoned. My family has abandoned me. Please complete the sentence. And this makes me complete the sentence. My family has abandoned me and this makes me. And please write it down. Whatever it makes me. It makes me a bad person. It makes me sad. It makes me not good enough. It makes me unacceptable. It makes me unworthy. It makes me poor. Whatever is your answer, write it on your terrible page. And Paro says this brings so much peace, knowing that the only one never abandoned me and I realized it was Sri Krishna, gave me so much strength that I'm back on my feet and working again, no dependency at all. How beautiful is that, Paro? Thank you for this share. Please write it down, my lovelies. I'm going to give you one moment, sorry, one, one minute in silence. Like Vasudha says, such a crucial and amazing piece of the puzzle this is. My family abandoned me, but I was never abandoned. So cool. Absolutely, Vasudha. It's the difference between saying I am anxious and I have anxiety. It totally changes the game. Our like Paru says, my family abandoned me and this makes me reconnect with divine forces. Fantastic. We are given a long time so that the force within can speak with the force without. Jiska koi nahi, uska khuda hota hai. Jiska koi nahi, uska force within hota hai. You cannot call on someone if you don't know someone is there for you. And this, the presence of our deities, of our gods, of our goddesses, of our angels, of our magical unicorns, Mermaids, elves, pixies, fairies, there are those that we can call on. And as we all evolve, we are going to get more and more comfortable with the intangible them. Intangible being, I'm not seeing them, right? I'm not seeing Sri Krishna. I can sense him. I can picture him. I'm not seeing him. I'm not reaching out and touching him like I can this computer. I'm not reaching out and touching him like I can the armrest of my chair. But this comfort with those that we cannot see, cannot touch, that is faith. This comfort with the non-material world is faith. Everything is not how you think. 
when you get a message, when you have an instinct, when your intuition kicks in, what is that? It's not based on data. You know what? My friend is going to get the award. How do you know? There's no data for it, right? You can't reach out and touch this piece of information, but you have the faith. You have the trust that your faith will not let you down. That trust you can feel tangibly. That trust you will feel physically. The more aloneness you have in your life, the more there is depression, the more there is worry, the more you must call on the force without to keep the force within nurtured. Because all of these, right, anxiety, insecurity, control, jealousy, worry, overthinking, overdoing, over people pleasing, over guilt, over unworthiness, all of these are ways in which we diminish the force within. These are not ways in which we are happy and confident. These are not the ways in which we are making choices and decisions for our best life. These are the ways we stay stuck. When you are stuck, the force within is struggling to speak to you because it will speak to you. You will show up on a call. You will show up at a book. You will show up with a helpful stranger. You will show up with something. That's the force within trying to communicate with you. If you are in a crisis, it's, oh God, help me. Help me through this. Hey, Bhagwan, And this cry, this cry is actually also what is required. That we turn to a higher power. That when our physical three-dimensional family is not there for us, I turn to the light and the light turns to me. Everybody has been abandoned by their family, either by one or by all. Everybody. Money is no protection against it. Fame is no protection against it. Success is no protection against it. Abandonment will happen so that you can reconnect to life, to God, to the unknown but very, very present and available and real force. The divine matrix. However you wish to understand this higher power, this higher love, and this higher intelligence. It's not a higher being, but this higher intelligence. Wonderfully expressed, Vasudha. I put so much energy and time in being accepted and loved by my family that I turned my back to the entire universe full of so many people and resources, just four or five people versus the limitless universe. Absolutely. And Itika says, my family's abandonment hurts, but I know it's not truly mine. It's a cycle passed down through generations. They didn't abandon me personally. They were repeating their own pain and their own Autobots. And which is why, if you've already gone through family life doctor, this will be a little deeper for you. If you've already gone through karmic life warrior, it will be even deeper for you. If you've also gone through five-star relationships, and all of these are up on the Mystic Lotus and Dragonflies channel, it will go even deeper for you. Because you will understand that abandonment is not even a human program. It is an animal program. It comes from our animal ancestry. All of us, our parents, grandparents, ancestors, past lives, every human being is moving from animal behavior to humane behavior, to humanitarian values, not just animal values, 
of survival, of territory, of competition, of violence, of aggression. Never abandoned. But never abandoned. To live like that, there is a journey. And that journey is the journey I said. Sometimes you will feel abandoned, but not alone. Sometimes you will feel alone, but not abandoned. And then, slowly, but very, very surely, and quickest and fastest with the degrees, you will get to not abandoned, not alone. And here, I want to give you the two words from Saturn's decrees. You've heard me use these two words. A lot of you all know these two words. But we are going to do these two words in live demo. I'm going to give them to you and then we're going to do them in the live demo. And these two words are a brain changer. They are neural pathway changers. They are a way to not worry because in worry, we use these two words to the most terrible effect. And these two words are what if. For anybody who is a warrior, worries all the time. And if you worry all the time, there's definitely deep insecurity. And there is a lot of control taking place in your life. And insecurity also, right? Nothing comes alone. Insecurity's other best friend is jealousy. You will always be comparing yourself to someone else. You will always be finding yourself lesser than others. Then feeling worse. Then feeling more worried. Worry is a brain chemistry that depletes serotonin and dopamine and serotonin and dopamine balance is crucial to manage anxiety. So the more we worry, the more anxious we get. Then the more anxious we get, the more we worry, the more the serotonin and dopamine balance goes off. And when we worry, we use what if incorrectly. We use it first of all as a question. Please do not use it ever again as a question. What if is not a question? We do not want the answer. If it comes, okay. But we are not looking for the answer. We are looking for the possibilities of the future. What if this does work out? Instead of thinking, but what if they don't like me? What if they don't say yes? What if they are not there? What if I wasted my time? You can leave now, you can leave now, you can leave now, you can leave now, you can leave now. Every warrior is making their life worse because what if is so powerful, you can create your future with just these two words. And you are creating your future when you use what if as a negative question with a negative answer. Because you see, when you're thinking, what if they don't like me? You're not thinking, what if they don't like me? What you're thinking is, they don't like me. They are not going to like me. Meaning? You have set your future in motion. And what a future is that? Now I'm depressed. They are not going to like me. Why should I even bother? I'm going to stay in bed. A vicious cycle has been set up through just two words. But the opposite is also true. What if they do like me? What if they do listen to what I have to say? What if this does work out for me? What is this doing to your body right now? Immediately the light is blazing through. Immediately the force within is coursing through your body. Oh my God, let me put on my dancing shoes, adjust my crown and step out. Isn't this the way you want to meet your future? Isn't this the way you want to create your future? Yes, of course. And how will we do this? In our demonstration, I will show you. But right now, I just want you to say this what if. What if I am not abandoned or alone? Two more times, please. What if I am not abandoned or alone? 
What if I have never been abandoned or alone? What if I will never be abandoned or alone? And tell me, how is this making you feel? Strong, confident, at peace. Yawning makes me smile, relax, tears of gratitude, always supported and loved. Amazing, right? How awake is the force within, my lovelies? There are those of y'all who are going to go on to do this work with others. There are those of y'all who are going to go on to do this work for yourself. And this live demo that we are going to do right now is a way to work with someone else. It's a little easier to work with someone else. So when you're on the training program, you will be budding up with someone to work like this. We did it on our last call with minus one, and minus one is also mwah, mwah, mwah. Today, we're going to try it with Saturn's manifesting decree of what if. Namrita, are you ready? Neha says, feeling light. Superb. Absolutely, Vasudha. Amazing. Truly. Truly amazing. Truly. And Lucille smiles. And anybody else? Who would like to come on? Please raise your hand on the dashboard so then I can see you. Here's what they're going to do. You're going to get a couple of minutes to talk about what's going on with you. And then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say and what you're going to say. And you're just going to keep saying that as I keep saying back to you what you have just said to me. And this sounds very complicated when you hear it. It'll make sense when we do this. And Vasudha's itching has vanished. Superb. And upper back pain is also gone. Amazing. Amazing. Great. Okay. One moment, Namrita. Let me find you. And there you are. Let's take a look at you. Sound check, Namrata, say hello. <coughs> Cannot hear Namrata, you can leave now. We're not being able to hear Namrata, you can leave now. But you know what? We will just try again. Sound check. Namrata, say hello. Hello. And hello. There you go. The decree in action. Everybody say hello. Namrata, Namrata, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Hi, Nidhu. Hi, Namrata. Thank you so much for agreeing to this. How are you doing? Thank you so much. I'm doing okay. I'm doing well. Is there anything on your mind that you would like to take a look at? Okay. So, um, these days I have been really losing my patience with the children. And I feel it's a build-up. So, um, uh, what I feel is that, uh, you know, I was a working mother. So, the kids were with, uh, with the nannies. 
and uh, these days i feel that they talk to me the the way they they have been you know sort of treating the nannies which is not very not very nice so um, every time that uh, you know i tell them that you maintain some discipline or do this so which is not happening which gives me a lot of stress and uh, it makes me very angry also at times so that's what i'm dealing with right now got it thank you for that share and here is the only thing that namrata is going to say as i say certain words or sentences and this is the force within method copyrighted to the decrees only and what namrata is going to say is aido what is what if i don't have to be or what if it doesn't have to be are you ready namrata as i give a word or a sentence this is all you're going to say back to me can you just repeat please yeah. yeah what is actually let me give you just one option what if i don't have to be yeah ready so that we can measure progress on a scale of 0 to anything how big is your stress very it's like a thousand <laughs> let's go with thousand okay starting now and everybody please make note of your own stress number stress anxiety worry insecurity just make a note of it pain hurt angst crisis stuck suffering struggle whatever is the word for you make a look, make a note of you it can i can i oh, add sorry. something more to what i said Yes, of course. So, uh, what I also feel is that every time that I want them to do something, the first thing is I want to eat this, I want to eat that, uh, call for a swiggy delivery, do this. So, all that I'm doing is I'm I feel I'm spending money, and as soon as the last bite of whatever they have eaten is over, they are back to square one. Right. Food, by the way, is a uh, immediate. relief for anxiety which is why emotional eating stress eating makes us feel much better and some of us become emotional eating addicts because that is the way we do relieve anxiety but i have made note of it shall we begin everybody is everybody got their own numbers down on their page give me a hmm if you have hmm Hmm. Cool. All right, Namrata. You've got your yes. the sentence you are going to say back to me. You have got that. Yes, I have. Great. Starting. Stress. What if I don't have to be stressed out? What if I don't have to be stressing out? what if i don't have to be stressed what if i don't have to be and have water and check there was a thousand stress how much is it right now it's come down to 100 fantastic how many seconds not even Five. a minute <laughs> maybe 30 40 seconds it also makes a very big difference of course when we do it in a group so thank you everybody for being here i appreciate it very much we will continue because namrata has mentioned a certain situation so we're going to take a look at that as well not listening to me 
what if i don't have to be distracting by eating what if i don't have to be losing patience what if i don't have to be not very nice what if i don't have to be completely frustrated what if i don't have to be angers me what if i don't have to be annoying to deal with them what if i don't have to be spending money is not helping what if i don't what if i don't have to be ordering the food is not helping what if i don't have to be have water wow this was amazing how are you feeling very relaxed my calms all the stress from the calms is gone like this it felt as if it's melting fantastic fantastic thank you so much thank you thank you everyone thank you nidu last question when you take a look at this situation what crosses your mind now handleable fantastic <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> thank you namrata thank you and there you have it again people speed test session it's over this was amazing in 5 minutes and the fourth within method you can use for those that you work with provided you are certified to so come for the training and get the right to use this method as well as more words you've already seen its magic with minus 1 you have now seen it with what if and you will see it again with more two and three and four words namrata fantastic yeah. great job well done thank you so much everybody thank say you thank you namrata yeah namrata say bye to everybody bye everybody thanks a lot thank you so much nidu thank you thank you and i see that twinkle has her hand up All right twinkle let us do a sound check with you Sound check twinkle yes, please. Please, everybody Hello And there she is everybody Hello. Hi twinkle can you hear me Yes i can Great everybody say hello to twinkle twinkle say hello to everybody Twinkle, are you okay? Yes, I can hear you. I cannot hear everyone else. Uh, no, there. <laughs> you you are not going to hear everybody else. Just say hi to everybody. Hi everyone. Super. Twinkle, tell us what's going on. What is it that you would like to get an answer with or relief from? uh as i mentioned in the chat as well uh the current scenario is you know to stay or not to stay or you know to be uh, continuing with the situation or you know find a relief that's something which is bothering me a lot all right so your what if is also going to be the same which is what if i don't have to be can you say that okay. once for me so that i know you've gotten it correct what if i don't have to be excellent i'm going to start and you are just going to say what if i don't have to be ready
twinkle confirm that you're ready by doing hmm cannot hear twinkle you can leave now cannot hear twinkle i i did say could you hmm okay now we can hear you and again yeah. now of the decrease in action okay before we begin twinkle on a scale of 0 to anything how much is your bothered energy how big is it 99 got it bothered what if i don't have to be very bothered cannot hear twinkle you can leave now you can leave now you can leave now what if i don't have to be can you hear me now we can okay extremely what, bothered what if i don't have to be angry about being in this situation what if i don't have to be confused what if i don't have to be overthinking what if i don't have to be have your turbo charge water had it and where the bothered was at a 99 how much is it now around 80 lovely let's give it a minute let us also see how the group is doing people what was your number for your thing before we started even before twinkle when we were working with namrata and what is your number now and i think a minute is up twinkle take a look at your number again it was 99 became 80 how much is it now i think it's come down to 25 you know it's there's a lot of relaxation in the head it's like uh, something lifted off from my head fantastic fantastic in silence and stillness answers show up because there is remaining 25 let me do just another brief round should i stay or should i go what if i don't have to be i don't know the right thing to do what if i don't have to be the fear of getting it wrong what if i don't have to be the fear of not helping him What if I don't have to be? How will he manage without me? What if I don't have to be? Dying over here. What if I don't have to be? Have water. and people take a look at your own numbers and twinkle where it was 99 became 80 became 25 how much is it now i said 7 wow amazing let's give it a minute until then tell us what is crossing your mind around this situation as of now it seems peaceful like you know 
there is a solution just around the corner fantastic the decrees do not just change they reveal they guide allow them to work with you in fact when we do the saturn's decree training one of the things that we say like a mantra is for me with me with me for me for me with me and if you look at it that's exactly what the force within is also saying for me with me for me with me so everybody for me with me with me for me and check again twinkle where it was 99 became 80 became 25 became 7 how much is it now i don't think it deserves any number as of now it's yeah. gone and there you have it again my lovely another speech to session nearly thank 10 you. minutes thank you twinkle and thank you for doing this with us say bye to everybody everybody say bye to twinkle truly grateful bye everyone thanks a lot for being a part of the healing journey thank you thank you twinkle thank you is there anything faster in the world and while you let me know because the answer is clearly no so many yawns what do so many yawns means asks pravina yawns are about releasing stagnant energy yawns are about releasing too much carbon dioxide and bringing in more oxygen please please put your sweet heart from the top of your head till the bottom of your feet have water and just check overall how are you feeling what's your sense of anxiety or worry for vasuda everything is too much suddenly so negative and please just say you can leave now 10 times have water savina itching means a desire to escape long held desire to escape it's a desire to leave the current situation you're in but have water say you can leave now 10 times for elizabeth content smooth delicious fantastic fantastic for poonam peaceful and she has written it in decree language 
where the full is put in capitals. Awesome. We will wait. Vasudha, let us know how you're doing after you can leave now 10 times because there is one more decree I would like to give you all. And Praveena says, feels like unnecessary overthinking. Just relax and go with the flow. Lovely. Look at your guidance. Where is this guidance coming from? From the force within. Where is this message coming from? From the force within. And Vasudha says, weak, exhausted, but less negative. And what if you feel absolutely energized with this next decree? The magic in you can leave now is actually the magic of three words. And these are The decrease in you can leave now is, of course, you can leave now, but the power comes from you can dash now. So when we can ask something to leave, we can also ask something to increase. Like one of the decrees in the group that we've done today is trust and faith you can increase now. Because we're using the power of you can and now and we're using what we want to do with the third word. Trust and faith, you can increase now. You can increase now. You can increase now. You can increase now. Ease and peace, you can increase now. You can increase now. You can increase now. Love and acceptance, you can increase now. You can increase now. You can increase now. What would you like increased? And for those of you all on the home group, this is what we're going to be practicing next week as well. We're going to be practicing what it is that we would like increased in our lives. And we're going to use it with two words. So normally we would say like love, you can increase now. And just as a matter of history, I want to tell you that when it first when we first started doing this, the setup was, you can increase in me now. You can increase in me now. And some of you all, especially this is your first call, the setup, you may enjoy the setup a little more. And then that became, you can increase now. Courage and strength, you can increase now. You can increase now. You can increase now. Energy and support. You can increase now. You can increase now. You can increase now. The force within. You can increase now. You can increase now. You can increase now. Peace and calm. You can increase now. You can increase now. You can increase now. Wellness and well-being. You can increase now. You can increase now. You can increase now. The thing that happens to us in the physical body when we are abandoned and alone is that we don't feel safe and we don't feel protected and we do not feel certain. We don't feel steady and stable. When we don't feel safe and protected, we live life like we're constantly under attack. We live life like we're under constant threat. We live life just trying to keep ourselves safe from whatever these attacks are, from whatever these threats are, because all of us have somebody or the other or something or the other in our lives that does feel threatening to us. It could be a person in authority or it could just be a certain situation. We don't feel safe when, when our household help hasn't shown up. Right? We're stressed out. Stress is just another word of saying, I am overwhelmed and anxious and panicky and completely worried right now, which is why stress, like anxiety, must always be taken very seriously. We feel under threat. We feel under attack. We feel under ambush. We feel so tight and tensed up. So, safety and protection, you can increase now. Safety and protection, you can increase now. 
safety and more safety you can increase now 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 pain and distress you can decrease now now the the decree for leaving has to be with leave you can leave now you are not you are not wrong pasuda this is still correct but the decree for clearing is you can leave now and you can increase now is the decree for increasing you can add other words instead of the word increase but the original saturn's decree is you can increase now and there are more and whenever we return with saturn's decrees training you all will all definitely be part of it but for today enjoy your water enjoy letting go enjoy receiving enjoy your exposure to the force within method and come along for more next week our chakra training package begins because the root chakra is the one most impacted by abandonment and aloneness and if the root is not okay how is the tree of life going to grow how good is it going to be how healthy is it going to be how radiant is it going to be and therefore our work begins with chakra training you are going to get two calls you are going to get practice from there you are going to move on to more decrees more two words three words four words in taking a look and understanding the role of family within anxiety the role of relationships within anxiety you're going to take a look at all the 76 symptoms of anxiety we're going to be clearing them on our calls wherever possible we are going to keep doing the live demos of the force within method you are also going to receive the cone of silence and stillness where the decree will be done for you you just sit back and process and the cone of silence and stillness is the place where we do have a mudra we hold the mudra we keep quiet and allow the decree to do its work and all of this begins next week there is the possibility of adding a one on one session as well and as you all know now in the session we're definitely going to be doing the force within method so whether you come for the chakra training and the session or whether you come for the next level which includes chakra training and the next round of working through abandonment and aloneness and anxiety and adding that session all details are available on our page and the team will just put that up Yes Neha of course you can you can use the replay of cone of silence it's maximum energy for 24 hours but it will still work it's 100% energy stays for 24 hours then the cone starts dissipating and this time around it's not just the cone of silence and stillness it's the cone of silence and stillness under the tree of life and under the tree of life is a way of us feeling safe hugged and held because not being hugged and held enough is another way we feel abandoned if you don't have enough hugs and being held in your life also the anxiety tends to go out of control but under the tree of life you will feel hugged and one of the best ways to feel hugged is to do the sweet heart around you you do it you will feel better you will feel enveloped embraced you will be hugged and held by the universe i thank you all very much for your time i thank you all very much for showing up here for yourself for each other and for me any questions anyone
Thank you, Nishi. So excited, yes. <laughs> And thank you for posting the link. And here it is again. Come along. All prices go up on Sunday midnight. So you do have some time. You have more than 24 hours. But after that, all prices go up. I look forward to seeing you on the group, on the calls. I look forward to us awakening the force within together, 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 together. Big love, big hug. Keep charging your water. Keep drinking more. See you soon. Namaste from India.